This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Do you know that a week from this coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, February the 17th? We will be having a service in our sanctuary at 6.30 p.m., which will include Holy Communion. You may also uh, watch our online videos. We are going to have a Lenten series that we will be uh, sharing with you via the internet, via these videos. I have to tell you, I will be missing our midday Lenten services this year. Uh, I always love those and midday even on Ash Wednesday. But remember, when you operate a Christian day school, what a blessing that is that we have that. But in the midst of a pandemic, we just cannot uh, have folks cross using different facilities, uh, older folks in the restroom while little children are using restrooms, things such as that. So it's 6.30 p.m. live here in the Holy Cross Sanctuary, or stay with us online this Ash Wednesday, a week from Wednesday, and also in the following Wednesdays, as I think we'll have a series you'll enjoy. Also, uh, we have decided to extend until February the 8th uh, access to the Discipleship Survey. Again, this is a great tool for learning a little bit about yourself, about your strengths and challenges you face in terms of following the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we say it? Thinking, feeling, and acting like Jesus. Now you do have to put your name down and I'm not sure why that is. I think it's part of just making sure uh, the person who collects it that there's not duplicates. But at any rate, we don't get that. All we do is get your information, the, the strengths and challenges, and that's aggregated or put together with many other Holy Cross partners. And that will help us in terms of uh, spiritual themes and emphases in 2021. So don't miss out. Take the survey. You can go to it at our website, www.holycrossfw.org. Now let's do an important thing. Let's worship our great God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We confess our Christian faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Our first lesson today comes from Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Don't you know? Haven't you heard? Haven't you been told from the beginning? Don't you understand the foundations of the earth? God is enthroned above the earth, and those who live on it are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the sky like a canopy and spreads it out like a tent to live in. He makes rulers unimportant and makes earthly judges worth nothing. They have hardly been planted. They have hardly been sown. They have hardly taken root in the ground. When he blows on them and they wither, and a windstorm sweeps them away like straw. To whom then can you compare me? Who is my equal? asked the Holy One. Look at the sky and see who created these things. Who brings out the stars one by one? He calls them all by name. Because of the greatness of his might and the strength of his power, not one of them is missing. Jacob, why do you complain? Israel, why do you say, my way is hidden from the Lord and my rights are ignored by the Lord? Don't you know, haven't you heard? The eternal God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, doesn't grow tired or become weary. His understanding is beyond reach. He gives strength to those who grow tired and increases the strength of those who are weak. Even young people grow tired and become weary, and young men will stumble and fall. Yet the strength of those who wait with hope in the Lord will be renewed. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and won't be weary. They will walk and won't grow tired. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel lesson comes from Mark, the first chapter, starting at the 29th verse. After they left the synagogue, they went directly to the house of Simon and Andrew. James and John went with them. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. The first thing they did was to tell Jesus about her. Jesus went to her, took her hand, and helped her get up. The fever went away, and she prepared a meal for them. In the evening, when the sun had set, People brought to him everyone who was sick and those possessed by demons. The whole city had gathered at his door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases and forced many demons out of people. However, he would not allow the demons to speak. After all, they knew who he was. In the morning, long before sunrise, Jesus went to a place where he could be alone to pray. Simon and his friends searched for him. When they found him, they told him, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus said to them, Let's go somewhere else, to the small towns that are nearby. I have to spread the good news in them also. This is why I have come. So he went to spread the good news in the synagogues all over Galilee, and he forced demons out of people. This is the gospel of the Lord. Pastor Allersmeyer, will you come forward? I'd like to have a prayer for you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Pastor Allersmeyer, for the shepherd he is to all he meets as he guides and cares for them. Thank you for his wisdom, for the words of truth that he reveals from the Bible. Thank you for his faith, for his exuberance of his praise for you, and the passion of his messages about you. Bless his message today and continue to give him the strength to proclaim your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tim. Boy, that prayer reminds me that um, I often feel so unworthy of um, the prayers that people offer for me. And I am so thankful I have any number of people who will tell me either in live worship or will drop me a line of, in terms of online worship that we are praying for you <clears throat> or we are praying for the staff of Holy Cross 
Lutheran congregation and school. That is so very, very important, especially in these times. You know, the gospel lesson that Tim read for us, talking about Jesus saying, I must go on and share the good news in other cities, of Jesus curing people and uh, casting out demons as people line up to come to him, and of a sick woman, Peter's mother-in-law, who when Jesus heals her of her fever, she gets up and immediately starts to serve. Each of these episodes begs the question, what is my legacy? What will it be that you will be remembered for? The Christian songwriter Robin Mark has a song, When It's All Been Said and Done. The lyrics go like this, and he's singing to the Lord. When it's all been said and done, there is just one thing that matters. Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done, all my treasures will mean nothing. Only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. And at the end of this song, he sings, I will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after. For you've shown me heavens, my true home. When it's all been said and done, you're my life when life is gone. That's a wonderful legacy. Another one I can't help but think of with uh, the observance of Martin Luther King Day just uh, a few weeks back were some words that he spoke in a sermon that were so arresting that his widow, Coretta Scott King, insisted that they be replayed as his own eulogy, as his legacy at his funeral in April 1968. And here's what Dr. King said. I'd like somebody to mention that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to give his life serving others. I'd like for somebody to say that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to love somebody. And then toward the end of it, he says, but I just want to leave a committed life behind. And that is all I want to say. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a well song, if I can show somebody he's traveling long, then my living will not be in vain. In our text, the goal that is sounded forth for us is to be like the unnamed mother-in-law who served, to think, to feel, and act like the most significant man who has ever walked on the face of the earth, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The problem? We live in a broken world. Time and time again, I don't know about you, but I come up against my limitations. I don't always have the energy to do what I intended to do or, or even sometimes the good intent. Just like that sick mother-in-law of Peter, facing the limitation of not being able to rise from her bed. I have those and I suspect you do as well. I face the limitation of uh, my own unavailability. I so admire Jesus in this text, for after he has cast out the demon in the synagogue and after he has spoken with authority, people are lined up from morning to night as he heals 
as he casts out demons. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I'm never that available. I get tired. Sometimes, as much as I love people and draw energy from people, I just want to kind of retreat a little bit. I think you're probably the same way. So many times it's so easy just to retreat behind our fenced-in yards or our locked doors, to veg out, as we say a little bit, and just watch some television, watch a movie or something, to not be as available as the Lord would call us to be. I think as well that sometimes we get a little fuzzy in terms of what our mission in life is. Jesus was very clear. He says it in our text. He says, let's go somewhere else to the small towns that are nearby. I have to spread the good news in them also. This is why I have come. Do you know why you've come into this world? Do you know why you are at this place at this particular time? And knowing that, do you follow through on that? I once had a pastor friend when I was wrestling with a call way back early in my ministry. And it was a call I accepted. I was in Wauseon, Ohio. I accepted a call to Boca Raton, Florida. And uh, boy, it really bit me, you know, because uh, it just really drew me because this school, this church in Boca Raton had a Christian day school, and I always wanted to be part of something like that. And I can remember this older pastor, he came up to me, and um, he said, how are you coming on that call? And I said, oh, you know, I'm praying and I'm wrestling over it. And he sort of narrowed his eyes and he looked at me, he says, you know what I found in my experience? I think you know right now what you're going to do. What you're praying for is the courage to simply act on it and to announce it to both of those congregations. Yeah, I'm not so sure we're fuzzy on our mission. In fact, here at Holy Cross, we say it's to make a Christ-like difference in the world. I'm not so sure we're fuzzy on that as much as having the courage to act upon that. Yes, indeed, we live in a broken world that would challenge any legacy that we would seek to bring. You know, older calendars of the church, and we, ha we follow what's called the liturgical calendar, the church year begins in Advent, then Christmas, then Epiphany. We're kind of in the waning days of Epiphany, and then it goes into Lent and so forth. Well, we follow what the historic Western church, going back many, many centuries, follow. In fact, we're pretty closely aligned in these holidays with the Roman Catholic Church. But there was a, an old Latin festival, or at least what we would call this particular weekend, and it was called Sexagesima. Now, what in the world is that? Sex means six. Sexagesima means that we are about 60 days, give or take a few, from the beginning of, um, of Lent. Actually, 60 days, excuse me, from, uh, from Easter. We were entering the season of Lent and sexagesima, and before that, septuagesima, 70 days. These were times in when we began, sort of pre-Lenten times, when we would gear up for the battle, for the fight, for the struggle. It was kind of a preconditioning program. It goes along with what I always kid about. Lutherans like to spend most of our lives in Lent. So at any rate, liturgically, it felt like and looked a lot like Lent. But I think that's important because we do face a broken world where, as we said last week, it is a struggle, and certainly a struggle to leave some sort of a legacy for those whom we love, those whom the Lord has placed around us, as our journey on this earth shortens and we seek to hand off faith to the next generation. But here's the secret. It's like a good old gospel hymn says it. In fact, our banner here says, focus on Jesus. 
That gospel hymn says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon the words of Jesus. Remember what he says in this text? I need to go and spread this good news. Turn, turn your eyes upon the actions of Christ. He raised a deathly ill woman from sickness to service. He can do the same thing, and he does do the same thing in our lives. Listen to the good news. Act upon the good news. Because we love. Why? Because God first loved us. We serve because on Calvary's cross and Easter's empty tomb, God first served us. There's a couple of quotes that I'd like to end with in a Bible passage that talk about legacy. One was written by a man who died 475 years ago. I believe it's this month. His uh, name is Martin Luther. And his statement was this. A Christian man is the most free Lord of all and subject to none. That's what we are in Jesus Christ, free. But Luther doesn't stop there. He goes on. He says, A Christian man is the most dutiful servant of all and subject to everyone. What's a legacy? To recognize and revel in the freedom we have in Jesus Christ and to use that freedom as an opportunity to serve, to think, to feel, to act like the Lord Jesus Christ, to make a Christ-like difference in the world. The second quote is from a man who passed away 65 years this month. He lost his life sharing the faith in the jungles of Ecuador. And he wrote something in his diary prior to his death that was amazingly prophetic and still inspires people to this day in terms of their legacy, including this guy speaking to you this day. His name was Jim Elliott, and he wrote these words. Listen carefully. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. That's why that woman served Peter's mother-in-law. That's why Jesus went about and cast out demons and cured people. That's why he said, I need to get out there with the good news that God has come in and changed our lives today and eternally. Because the legacy is something that we give, because we won't be able to keep it. But in doing so, we gain that great gift, of that free gift of everlasting life, that which we shall never ever lose. The Bible passage, get a little discouraged, think how in the world can I leave a legacy? What a great promise was read for us this day from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 40, where the prophet writes these words. Even young people grow tired and become weary, and young men will stumble and fall. Yet the strength of those who wait with hope in the Lord will be renewed. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and won't become weary. They will walk and won't grow tired. That is the legacy that is ours through the death and resurrection of Christ. That is the legacy we are called to leave on this world. 
Would you pray with me? Lord God, Heavenly Father, I thank you this day for those who took very seriously to call to think and feel and act like the Savior Jesus and who chose to pour their lives out and invest themselves in me to speak the good news of salvation, to challenge me when I would place anyone upon the throne of my heart or anything except for the Savior. And Lord, I thank and praise you that they continue to speak to me and also through me. Lord, each of us have people like that. And I'd ask you this day to forgive us when we fail to cherish that legacy and fail to convey that legacy to those around us and those who follow after us. Forgive us, Lord. Renew us and free us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, including the bestowal of a legacy for the glory of your holy name. And dear friend in Christ, the great promise, the great hope is this. Because I live, you will live also. I will wipe away every tear from your eye. I have taken your sin upon myself and given you my righteousness. Those are the words and actions of our Savior, His legacy to us. And because of that, I can proclaim to you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord, it's your
we want to thank you again for being so generous and blessing us here at Holy Cross with the tithes and offerings that you've given. And we want to remind you that you can give those tithes and offerings online, in the mailbox, or drop them off at the church office anytime. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, 75 years ago, this congregation started a legacy here. And Lord, through these tithes and offerings, let us continue that legacy. So 75 years or more, we'll go forward and you will bless this congregation and bless these people and leave a legacy with this money that you have given us, Lord. We just thank you so much. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God and for all people according to their needs. We give thanks to you, dear Father, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, that through him the gospel has been preached, casting out the works of Satan and the corruption of sin, which we could not overcome. By your word, rescue us from every evil of body and soul. Lord of the church, give joy to your servants on whom you have laid the necessity to preach the gospel, that by your many means would be saved in every nation, and that together we may share the blessings of Christ. Almighty God, creator of the world and its foundations, you hold might over the powers of nature and the rulers of the earth. Graciously preserve our land, its produce and industry, and our leaders together with our people. Do not disregard us for our sins, but renew us that our lives may be peaceful and our country governed according to your will. For those in need that our prayers, that they would be brought to the great physician of body and soul, whose hand turns away demons, disease, and every ill effect of sin. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Pastor, a final thought? I think it's amazing that 2,000 years after a sick woman got up and served people, that we still talk about her and reflect upon her life, her legacy. The healing of Peter's mother-in-law by the one who cast out demons and healed people and went about the business of preaching and embodying the good news, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He still is there for us today, healing, forgiving, that we might leave a legacy. How's that done? When our eyes and our ears and our lives are focused on Jesus. Receive the blessing of our great God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.